Hi everyone, in today's video, I'll be going over how to use the amplitude uh, component. It's a really useful one. And then I'll show you how to create this type of structure uh, using that component. So stay tuned and let's jump right in. Okay, so let's bring in a uh, YZ plane. And this is gonna give us a construction plane that will allow us to put up anything uh, right side up rather than right on the floor. So we'll use this to bring in an arc. And we'll plug that plane into this plane. And now we see that we have the start of an arc here. Now we're not going to worry about the angle because we only want half of it. Um, so we'll actually go here and just give it a radius. So I'll say 240. And now we can take this and extrude it. So let's go ahead and extrude this arc in which direction? Well, we know we want to go perpendicular to the YZ plane, or here at the bottom, we can extrude in the X direction. So that's something that you would have to be kind of aware of are your coordinate systems. So if we take this arc and extrude it in the X direction, so I'll double click here, bring in an X unit. And now I can plug this into the X and give it a value, let's say of 120. So once you have this, you basically have a base surface that we can subdivide. But one of the reasons why I wanted to do this tutorial is to share with you what amplitude does. So let's say you didn't want to bring in an X value and you just wanted to use the plane that it sits on as the direction. You could do that. You would you would bring in an amplitude component, which is the point of this video. And then in here, in the vector, we're going to plug in the plane. Now, what's going to happen is that the vector is going to be perpendicular to the to the plane. So it's going to extrude in this direction, perpendicular to the plane. So that's why we put the YZ plane into the vector. Now we can put the vector into the direction. And it essentially does the exact same thing just that you don't need to worry about a coordinate system once you already have the base plane. And then here, this just becomes um, your slider to increase the length. So I want, so that's one of the important things and useful things that we can get out of the amplitude component, but there's further things we can do with it. Now, uh, let's go ahead and subdivide this using isotrim. So if you haven't noticed uh, in my videos, I typically do isotrim um, subdivisions because they're pretty simple to do and they come with Grasshopper automatically. You don't have to download a plugin to get subdivisions. There's other ways, but this is my, my favorite way. So I bring in um, isotrim, then I bring in divide domain squared. These two come in together every time and the segments always goes into the domain. Now we have to plug in this plane, which is an extrusion, and we'll plug that both into the domain and to the face. And automatically we have a subdivision of 10 in the U and 10 in the V. So if you want to decrease the count in one way, you would plug in a, a slider and then here we do a different slider. So I think I like the aspect ratio of 10, let's see, five to eight, I think that should be good. So now I want to show you how we can extrude these perpendicular to the face. So if you wanted to extrude them right now, you would have a hard time um, because let's say we extrude all of these up in the Z direction. And let's say we give it a thickness of five. If we take a look in elevation view, notice that we don't have a consistent thickness um, in the structure. What we do have is here, we have a maximum of five. And here on the side, we actually go to zero because um, this is uh, when you extrude it, you're extruding it just vertically. So if you did want to extrude it perpendicular to this face, how would you do that? 
well, we're going to need to get the center point here with a plane. So to do that, I bring in a component. So before that, I'll unplug this. So holding down control, I can unplug this way. Now I'll take my isotrim surface, which is basically a group of 40 subdivisions. We're going to bring in a evaluate surface. We're going to reparameterize this before we bring it in. And now we're going to bring in that surface into here. And now we're going to need to create a point. So the quickest way to create a point is going to be MD slider. We're going to shrink this down to be small. We'll keep it in the middle. That way it references the exact center point. And then we'll plug in that point there. And now notice that we have all of these construction planes that are perpendicular to the form of this structure. And that's going to be useful because now we're going to take these panels and extrude them perpendicular to the actual plane here. Not like an extrusion where we just went up and down. So this gives us an individual plane for each one of these faces. So now let's go ahead and take these planes and extrude those um, these isotrim surface. So let's go ahead and double click here. Let's go to an extrude again. And we'll leave this here to show the difference at the end. Once we bring in extrude, we're going to bring, bring in an amplitude component. This amplitude component is going to reference every single one of these planes using the frames. Frames are going to be your construction planes here. Amplitude, we'll do the same. We'll say five. And now we can plug in the surface into the base and the vector into the direction. And now we have a perfect extrusion perpendicular to that. So we will get some overlaps. So let me get this fixed. We will get some overlaps because it is extruding out. So when you extrude out relative to the center, there will be some overlaps here, but those are things that we can fix. Um, what's important about this is to get the consistent thickness all the way around. And so if we take a look now here on the side, we see that everything was extruded perpendicular. So let's go ahead and increase or decrease the thickness of that structure. So that's um, one of the reasons why I like to use amplitude because you can basically create any direction using reference plane. And you could also use a curve to represent the direction. But what this is going to do is just do all of the different 40 frames. And this is going to bring in the 40 different isotrim surfaces. And it's going to reference them accurately and extrude them like this. So uh, if you have any questions or uh, have any other components that you have questions about, let me know. I can make a video about it. Um, check out the description. I will have the script for you to check out. Okay, so now that we got to that point, let's say you wanted to not extrude it. You could also do a move. So you're not just stuck with using the amplitude for one component. You could use it for any of them. So let's go here to move. In which direction? Perpendicular to that. Which planes? It's going to be these. So now it extruded them in or it offset them in let's go ahead and offset it out so to do that i'll double click here go to a negative component and i'll plug in the value here plug it into the motion there and now we see that we basically have them um, out offsetting out so we can also take those and to further um, make it you know more fun we can go here to area get the center point and scale the geometry, which are going to be these planes relative to the center. So now we have the ability to, let's say, offset this in and out and using the factor, 
I can go ahead and increase or decrease the size. So this is another fun way in which you could create a structure. So we can go from our isotrim surfaces and we'll go to deconstruct BREP. And we'll do the same thing for these. We'll deconstruct the BREP for all of these. The important thing now is that we take the edges and we graph them so it organizes both of the sets in um, the same way. And now we'll do a loft command from those curves to these curves. So I went fairly quickly on that one. If you have questions about it, let me know. I can go over that fairly quickly. And I've done it in other videos. So if you that was tricky, let me know. So I'll get rid of this stuff. And I'm going to clean it up. Uh, for now, I'll just take this disable preview. And now we have this type of structure. So amplitude was the reason for this video. So you can check out how this, um, you can do amplitude for both the length. And when we take that and we offset it out, we can go kind of crazy with this one. So let's go to 25. And now we have this type of structure. And lastly, our ability to scale this down further. So um, like I said, check out the description and I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching Deco Graphic Studio. Make sure to check the links below for the script that I made in this video. And if you want to learn more Rhino and Grasshopper, I have a Skillshare and Udemy site where I have more content like this. So if you like one-on-one -on -one tutoring, make sure to let me know. I have an email below. Uh, but thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you next time.